In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure Copilot Studio to check a ServiceNow knowledge base and then go on to check external knowledge bases in the case that it doesn't find something in your internal ServiceNow knowledge base. In an earlier video, I explained the different fallback patterns that you may be able to use. In this case, for this video, we will be using pattern two, which is we're going to use the fallback to a internal knowledge base and then we're going to go to a second layer and we're going to use generative answers again but we're going to use it over public knowledge so it's a little bit different than what's documented in pattern two here and that we're going to use generative answers not once but twice in this design so just to look at the architecture that we're going to be exploring today again we will fire on the unknown intent then we will move to the ServiceNow knowledge base using generative answers to see if there's something there. If nothing's returned, then we move on to the external knowledge base check using generative answers. And in this case, we'll use Apple support, Microsoft support, and Android support in the case that we don't find the answers in the internal knowledge base in ServiceNow. So we'll first start with an empty copilot using Copilot Studio. This Copilot is not configured to have generative answers turned on. So what we first want to do is I want to go to the Generative AI tab and I need to go in and I need to turn on Boost Conversation Coverage with Generative Answers. Now once we have this and the changes are saved, I'm going to simply show that now generative answers is turned on and by doing this we now have a system topic called conversational boosting in the conversational boosting you'll notice here that it's already has a generative answers node and I'm going to make a lot of modifications in this specific place to make sure that we get the fallback pattern that we were looking for let's start by making sure that we can call ServiceNow directly. So the first thing we'll want to do is we'll want to go in and we'll want to create a connector at the very top. So let's go ahead and do that. We basically say call an action. We look for a connector. And in this case, you type in ServiceNow and hit enter. And notice that we have many different connectors available. We're going to choose the Get Knowledge Articles. You will see that we have this red exclamation point here. It's because we need to define a connection. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a connection. As you can see, I already have numerous connections that have been created. So I'm going to simply choose the connection I want to use. As you can see, the connection now is being used properly and we now have a green check mark. Now you will have to configure your own connection and you'll need to make sure that you use the logon credentials that you would want to use for your ServiceNow implementation at this point. We'll move forward by hitting submit. At this point, we have the connector, but we need to pass in some additional information. So the first thing we're going to want to do is pass in some information here. We'll want to pass in what the user said in order to be able to look that up in a knowledge base. So that is found underneath system, and you're looking for activity.txt. That's the last thing that the person said. The next thing is we need to pull in the field that we want. And in this case, the field that we want is the body. So you can just type body in. Then we want to put a limit on this. And the reason we're doing this is we can only really take in three different knowledge articles for assessment. So we're going to make sure that we uh, put that in and save it. So we're just going to say that we want three here. Now, if you wanted to 
add additional filters or you wanted to have a specific knowledge base that you're going to check or things of this nature, that is available in the API. In the case of our instance, we're not going to apply any filters or any specific knowledge base locations. Now, as you can see, what will happen is we will result in a variable that is called get knowledge articles as a result. This is fine and you'll see that it will come back as a record. So the next thing that we need to do with this is we're going to have to format this information for generative answers. So we'll simply add a node and we'll do variable management and set a variable value. So the first part is we need to create a new variable and we'll just create a new one here and we're going to make some changes to the variable we just created. We'll just call this one for now formatted search results. We don't need to make any additional changes to this variable, just making sure that we've set it to a name that we want to reuse for later. Now, the next step is that we are going to need to form a way to create the table that Generative Answers expects to see. So we need to make sure that we go and formulate that. Now the way that we're going to do this is we will create a formula. And within the formula, I suggest going into a larger view like this. And we're going to need to do a for all statement. So we'll do for all, and you can see the type ahead working for us. We'll open the parentheses, and then I like to just continue to type here, which is the next thing is, is that we want topic dot the get knowledge articles. Um, and then we're going to return back articles and then you'll put a comma because what we're going to do now is we want to create the different table entries for each of the different articles that were returned. So when, in order to do that, we'll simply put in the opening bracket that we need and we will call it content is the name of the first row or, or the first column within the row. And in this case, we want to concatenate And what I want to do is I'm just concatenating a couple of pieces of information and I'm going to put in uh, the title from the artic uh, article and then I'm going to have it where I want to separate this with a um, with a dash so I'm just going to put a space dash space and then close this and then we will then come in and do fields dot value and then we will close this parentheses now just to explain what we did here we just simply are concatenating the word title or the title of the article with then a dash in between it and then we're grabbing the actual value from the implementation or the, the knowledge article itself. So this gives us all of the text that's in the knowledge article. We'll put another comma because we need another, uh, another, um, another column within our row. And this one we'll call content location. And in this case, we're going to concatenate. But what we're having to concatenate here is we need to put the URL in. Um, so that way we get the right citation to the knowledge article. So in this case, I'm going to put in the information of the URL for my particular ServiceNow instance. And then we're going to put in the number from the ServiceNow article. Now, just to explain what we've done here and the way to get this is if you just simply go into ServiceNow, and you look at an article within your ServiceNow instance, you will find that you'll be able to get this URL.
In this case, just be aware that you'll see that value is blue and that's really not the correct way to do this. So let's just fix this really quick. It should be field dot value. So that's why we had a problem here. So if you run into that problem, just know you can see here that for all shows it properly now. Um, make sure that it should look more like this. The main reason that this happened is because of the fact that value is also a PowerFX command. So that's just the IntelliSense being a little too smart for us. So now that we've done this, and again, I'll hold here just so that you can see exactly what we did. We basically did a for all. We grabbed the topic of the knowledge base articles information that we've already created before. We then created a table which allows us to be able to go in and create uh, a, each row will have something called content. Then in that I'm putting the title plus the field value information, which is the body of the actual knowledge article. And then I'm creating a different column within that row that is concatenating the, to get the URL and making it where it creates the URL with the number of the knowledge article. Again, this will have to be from your ServiceNow instance, will be the URL to the knowledge article itself once you finish this concatenation. Now, we'll go ahead and click Insert, and as you can see, we now have taken the information from ServiceNow, we have formed it and queried it, and now we've formed it into the table that we need, and then we need to pass that into generative answers. So to do that, I will simply come down here, and I will look at the custom data that we have, and we will select the formatted search results and pass it in as custom data. Now, if you want to add additional formatting or anything else, you can do it here. You can also change the moderation level. So if I wanted to move to say medium, I can do that. And with that, I'm gonna hit save. Now, once this is saved, we should be able to just ask a question to the ServiceNow knowledge base. So let's go ahead and test that. You'll see that we hit the fallback. It's formatting it, and here is the answer for the about the Windows key. Now, this is great. We've seen this before. Now let's go in and let's add some more complication to this. So we've checked our internal knowledge base, but what if we want to check our add uh, a step where we want to check the external knowledge base? So let's walk through how to do that. In the case of this, you can see that it follows this path in the case that it actually answers the question. However, we want to change that and we want to change it to say that what if that didn't happen where it says all other conditions. In this case, what we want to do is we want to go in and hit advanced and we want to do and add a new generative answers node. And the input that we want here is going to be again the activity.txt which is what we had before up here. So you're basically recreating exactly what you saw up here, but we're going to change the data source for this. So in this, what I want to do is I want to say that I want to use a custom Bing custom search implementation. So let's look at my Bing custom search implementation first. So for those that don't know about the Bing custom search, I have a video that I've already recorded previously that's on my channel around Bing custom search. So I won't go into a ton of details here on this. However, I will show you that in this Bing custom search implementation, I have support.microsoft.com, I have learn.microsoft.com, support.apple.com, and support.google.com slash Android allowing me to search all of these external knowledge bases and make sure that it gives me results. Now, once you've 
created this, you will uh, go through the process of publishing. And once you publish, you will end up with a search configuration ID. And you will need to copy this for what we're doing at this point. Now, once you have this, we will go back over to our copilot that we were creating. Back in our copilot, you'll see here that we have search public websites. You can change this to Bing custom search, and then all we need to do is paste in the actual Bing custom search configuration. Now, once we've done this, again, we can go back, we could change the moderation level, we could add our on custom prompt. All of this is things that you can add as you can do with any other uh, implementation of generative answers. So we're gonna go ahead and save this. And once it's saved, you can see now we have this. Now, we have to do the error handling that comes along with this. So we need to recreate this, this con concept up here. And you can actually just come up and click this, and we're gonna use our copy and then we're going to just paste this in. And you can see that it went ahead and did exactly the same logic up here. So that if it gets an answer, it answers and then it ends the topic. But if it doesn't, it just continues on through. So again, super valuable the copy and paste feature inside of Copilot Studio. So we'll just simply save this again and now let's test it. I'm gonna refresh the entire conversation just so that you can see this work. We'll start by typing in our query that we'll check in our internal knowledge base. And you'll see that it goes through and it selects the correct information and fires to our internal service now knowledge article. However, let's ask a question that's not in the ServiceNow knowledge articles. Notice that it will go the correct path here, but I want you to see something that you may wonder if you get this scenario. Notice that it actually went on through the fallback path. Now, why did it do that? Let's just go and look at that because there is an advanced configuration on a generative answers node that most people don't know about. So I wanted this to fail so that you could see where it answered the question, but then it said, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to help you with this. Now, why is that happening? So let's go back and take a look. And when we go to the conversational boosting tab and we follow our logic, you'll see that it comes through and it went to all other conditions. It did not fire the answer had a valid answer in it. The reason behind this is because when we created our new node, it doesn't have the configuration in it to be able to have uh, where it's storing the answer. So you need to go into the advanced settings and you need to come in and select that you want to store this answer into the answer field. Now, because we've done this and we go and we hit save again. Now, if we go through the exact same test scenario again, notice the difference. Asking a question that's in the ServiceNow knowledge base results in the proper answer. And when we ask the question that's not in our ServiceNow knowledge base, what happens is it goes the correct path and it will answer the question, but now it fires properly and ends the topic as you would expect. I hope you guys have found this video to be super helpful and informative. As always, you can like and subscribe to my channel and Feel free to go and try out Copilot Studio yourself at aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio.